This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, October the 9th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. Very quickly, uh, just a quick shot, courtesy of CNN, uh, of uh, some of the damage along US a uh, A1A in Flagler Beach, Florida. Uh, certainly a great deal of damage for Florida and the uh, southeast U.S. coast to deal with. And then couldn't help but enjoy this shot. Uh, this is actually uh, several days back, but from NASA, the uh, ISS going over Hurricane Matthew. Clear skies across the state of Alabama this morning, and it's a bit cool in some spots. Our sky watcher at Black Creek reporting 39 degrees. I think that's his first 39 or 30s for this fall season. Surface map features large high pressure uh, well to our north as uh, Matthew begins to move out into the Atlantic. And it doesn't look like Matthew will be a looper after all. Going to head out uh, pretty much straight out into the Atlantic. In the upper atmosphere, we have a bit of uh, upper low over uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and that is going to be nudged out to sea as that trough moves across the Great Lakes. In the meantime, ridging will come in behind it, and that's going to be the predominating feature in our weather pattern. It is a little bit cooler across central Alabama this morning, as most locations in central Alabama reporting the 50s. Again, it is a little cooler in the northeast. Uh, you can see that uh, we have... Uh, DeKalb County uh, up there, Fort Payne reporting 41, I believe, and a little a little warmer down on the, the Gulf Coast, uh, but even Mobile reporting in the 50s. Looks like uh, most spots saw lows this morning, at least in central Alabama, in the lower and mid 50s. Watch warning map. Not uh, too busy, but we do have, of course, all the advisories related to Matthew uh, on the outer banks of North Carolina and out into the Atlantic. Across uh, Alabama and Mississippi and parts of Arkansas, we have high fire danger. And then to the north, the uh, medium blue color in the western Great Lakes region is uh, freeze advisories. And then we have a kind of a combination of some uh, freeze advisories up there in the uh, north central United States. QPF, and unfortunately, we just can't seem to buy rain down here. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to see any for the next five days and probably longer than that. Storm Prediction Center outlooking a marginal risk over parts of uh, New Mexico, southern New Mexico uh, for uh, today. No marginal risks or any uh, slight risk areas for days two and three. Tropics, uh, Matthew has become a post-tropical storm. Uh, we still are dealing with Nicole. Nicole's still a tropical storm, but uh, looking a little bit better than she did on the uh, Satellite image yesterday, the track of Matthew is forecast to take it out into the Atlantic as, uh, as again, that post-tropical storm. And then uh, it looks like Nicole will follow suit shortly thereafter, uh, but it looks like it could uh, come very close to, if not over Bermuda uh, on Thursday, uh, and then become actually a hurricane as it gets out into the North Atlantic. All right, there's 06 GFS model run this morning, and there goes our upper uh, trough, and that's taking Matthew out to sea. And uh, in the meantime, ridging coming over us, so we're going to see the results of uh, high pressure well to our north over the Great Lakes, nosing its way all the way down into Texas. The upper uh, ridge continues with us on Monday, and you see we have a little disturbance over Oklahoma and Kansas uh, that disturbance moves by fairly quickly, so I doubt that we'll see much in the way of anything except maybe a few clouds uh, Tuesday as it moves by, uh, as that surface high moves out into New England. And we may see a little bit uh, of wedge action or cold air damming, uh, thanks to the position of that high. The high, a little bit weak to cause a very good wedge, but uh, certainly showing up a little bit. The upper air pattern, uh, we... we um, are now watching at midweek, we're now watching a very substantial trough coming across the western Great Lakes and extending down into uh, the Central Plains states. That trough moves quickly to the eastern Great Lakes, and it looks like it'll drag a front down across our area. But once again, unfortunately, the front, no moisture. The precipitable water values, as you can see, are very, very low. Uh, so it doesn't look like we'll see much more than just a few clouds. Friday, the action is a little weaker. We have a little weakness coming through the flow uh, in the central Mississippi River Valley. 
and that's actually uh, likely to produce some precipitation over that way, but it does look like it will zip along quickly and uh, not likely to produce, once again, anything more than just a few clouds uh, as we head into Saturday as we see the ridge once again taking hold. So just uh, not much to report on as far as precipitation goes for the next week or so. Now we're getting out into voodoo country, but on Sunday, uh, the 16th of October, we have a trough that is coming across the central part of the United States. And that trough uh, is going to move Monday into the Ohio and uh, Tennessee River Valleys. So that is like our, our next really possible shot. But oh my gosh, moisture still is very, very limited, and the GFS is still not suggesting that we'll see much. It certainly will not be a drought breaker. We could use something that's going to be more long-lasting than just showers. All right, now we're well out into voodoo country, and we have a very substantial trough around Saturday the 22nd. So that looks like a nice, cool shot. And once again, that might per, uh, provide us with some sort of precipitation. At least let's hope so. We certainly could use it. And then by the time we get out to the end of uh, the forecast run around the 24th of October, we're in a bit of a zonal pattern, but we do have uh, a little short wave coming out of New Mexico. And hopefully that might pick up some Pacific moisture and give us something. But you know what it is. It's out in voodoo, and you know how voodoo is here today, gone tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. James Spann should be back with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. Have a great day and Godspeed.